Welcome everyone uh, to the fortnightly partner solution series. Uh, I'm really looking forward uh, to our session today. We've got um, Abbott and Morley, um, which I'm sure all of our Lightyear Docs members uh, are aware of um, and uh, what they provide into Lightyear Docs in relation to um, obviously our master legal templates and our sign-offs and also our sport, uh, support and solution series. And um, I'm joined here with the uh, uh, infamous uh, duo of uh, Grant <laughs> Abbott and Tony Enamorulis, um, the two, two poobars. As, as two they, poobars, we're the two poobars. Um, I, I'm, quite, I'm quite excited as well because um, I've got about uh, 28 minutes left of lockdown. Um, I'm in lockdown because I uh, was part of the Master Strategy Day last Friday uh, at uh, Change GPS headquarters with uh, Tim Munro and um, Grant, which is a fantastic day full of strategy, but um, really looking forward to this and uh, and getting out of, uh, we're just discussing it, getting out of uh, lockdown uh, means that I get to go east to camping, which has been delayed for the last two years because of um, COVID. So I'm a little bit excited about that as well. I'm probably not as excited as my children about going camping, but um, certainly excited nonetheless. Um, so thanks for joining us today, Grant and Tony. Obviously, Grant has a a big role within Lightyear Docs, uh, obviously being the founder, but uh, in a day-to-day -day, um, operations as well. So, mm. uh, Tony, Tony, I also I saw on Facebook last night that uh, you were to be congratulated as well. I think you're the 18th uh, something I saw. Yeah, I got I got promoted up the pyramid, mate. You know, to the 18th yep. degree. Oh. Um, I'm, it's just all about you know about the Freemasonry and all yeah, that type of stuff. Yeah, it is. It actually got me. I got on uh, searching around and seeing what uh, the different uh, levels mean and everything last night. I was having a look online. So I'm sure no, it's, it's pretty good on reading. And so it's quite interesting. You know, yeah, it is interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know, my dad yeah, got a so, degree, um, I think. So I think your dad, your dad was special. I know. Um, your, your late dad was special. He got up to his 30th. So, oh, no, pretty cool. And I'm due to and I'm due to get up to my 30th in November. So, wow. oh wow, well done. So we'll, we'll have a look at that also. Anyway, but let's yeah. get on with. Uh, yeah, so let's, let's jump in. On. Obviously, everyone knows about these great sessions. We're getting more and more popular. Um, uh, I was actually BGL reached out during the week and said that uh, there's been a little fair bit of commentary and uh, and uh, feedback about uh, all the great things we're doing and uh, and, and uh, they've heard all about this and Daniel uh, said how wonderful it is and um, so we're getting together to see what further things we can do uh, just after Easter as well so I look forward to that um, as well but um, I won't go too much into this this, this sort of so shows a bit about a bit of our ecosystem in terms of our partner solutions and everything that we've had um, that we've been presenting and we're going to continue to roll those out um, so that shows you the light year docs and Abbott and Molly. I'll let Tony and Grant go a bit more into what, what a sort of relationship means and uh, do the presentation. I guess I'll just jump in and ask some questions as we're going through, if you want to uh, run through now, Grant and Tony. Yeah, that'd be great. Thanks for that. Yeah. Um, thanks for your erudite and wonderful discussions. I'm sure by six o'clock tonight when you're camping and you put your tent up, and I do notice it's raining a bit, um, that you'll probably be in a, a position of, um, I've had a few beers, so you'll probably be less lucid, but that's that's a fine position to be in. Um, look, uh, uh, Tony's going to talk about it a little bit later. I'm going to go into the agenda very shortly about uh, how Abbott and Morley started off. Um, just from my perspective, many of you are probably well aware that, um, you know, uh, I've had an SMSF uh, practice in one way, shape or form, starting with that the brilliantly named Grant Abbott Consultants. So I don't know how I came up with that name, but anyway, uh, that morphed into um, uh, the strategist group, SMSF Strategies, uh, now Infinity. And uh, all along that process, you know, right from the early days, um, obviously uh, when you're offering documents, whether they're uh, online or whether they're um, uh, offline, um, you need obviously to have legal sign off on those documents. And uh, I've been through quite a few lawyers. In fact, uh, right at the early days, Dan Butler um, didn't sign off, but we were um, running all our documents through there. Uh, one of the most frustrating um, things that ever happened was uh, back in 1999, for those of you probably well aware, is that uh, there's quite fundamental changes to the CIS Act. 
uh, and that we went from an excluded super fund to a self-managed super fund in the tax office uh, being the relevant body. And uh, so everyone went mad on uh, upgrading their deeds as, as was required. Uh, we went out to our advisory network at that time and uh, offered it. Um, and I, I wanted to personally do it around about $180, but uh, we needed to get a lawyer to do it at that stage. We didn't want to do it in-house. And uh, Dan was charging us $380. And of course, everyone else was uh, charging 200. So we completely lost the boat there, uh, which was obviously very upsetting and, you know, I vowed not, never to do that again. So that once we then started up and uh, doing uh, our own stuff, uh, then we got involved with lawyers, uh, Ian Glenister, uh, Shane Ellis. Uh, but I found that um, both of the, the lawyers uh, tended to come on board, learn a bit of stuff, and then they moved on and did their own thing, which which I don't mind. So one of the elements there is that with Now Infinity, um, you know, I Tony reached out to me. I'd known Tony quite a bit from a LinkedIn, was also involved with one of our, our clients at that stage. And uh, so we set up a Now Infinity Legals to ensure that Now Infinity had legal sign-off. And of course, uh, once I left there, um, Tony stayed on for a little while, but things went a little bit pear-shaped. In fact, I'm not even sure who signs off on uh, class documents or whatever they're called now, but you know that's immaterial. One of the important things from our perspective is that uh, with Lightyear Docs, um, that we are primarily, um, apart from a few clients, uh, we're really exclusive to Lightyear Docs users, which is great for all of you, um, particularly when you come down and have a look at the, our skill set. Um, you know, we don't do commercial law, we don't do family law, although around SMSFs, of course, we do family law and estate planning, etc. So, you know, we've got our, our, our core competencies. Um, the good thing about it is that uh, with Lightyear Docs is that I'll be talking about the sign-off process very shortly, that Abbott Morley are, are always there for you. And I think that that's absolutely crucial and I'll talk about you know where where the legal services line stands I don't want to emphasize that because there's plenty of you know there's been online document providers since 2001 um, and there's yet to be a um, you know a, a really big case on uh, people providing uh, online documents so I'll go through the process uh, how it's done etc um, our specialisations, for those you probably pretty aware, is much like Sapepa, I suppose, is SMSFs, um, estate planning, asset protection, uh, property development. Uh, but again, back most of the property development that we deal or advise on deals with SMSFs. Estate planning, we get involved in a lot of cases around that and also asset protection. More often than not, I would say that probably about 30% of our revenue um, comes from fixing things. You know, someone's effed up here or stuffed up there you know we come we come in to um, not essentially you know have a problem with things but to actually provide a solution and you know we don't we don't write you know huge letters of advice unless it's absolutely necessary uh, we go in and fix up documents um, you know we'll do lost deeds so to give you an example um, doing a lost deed is is really the provision of a legal service so that we take that in-house at Abbott Morley and we don't put that up on the Lightyear Docs site. So the same with deed of rectifications and ratifications. Again, we don't put that up on the site because it's a matter of being able to go through deeds and objectively, uh, legally uh, providing the relevant uh, deed of ratification and rectification. So they're all available. Um, and if you've got those sort of issues with your clients or you find there's a stuff up, you know, please feel free to run it through Abbott and Morley. Uh, likewise, I would strongly advise that everyone um, gets all of their discretionary trust deed upgrades. Now, you can either do it directly through Lot Your Doc site or um, Abbott and Morley are happy to do a bulk price uh, for you. If you've got three, four hundred, uh, we can come in and turn them around really quickly and, and give you a bulk price on that. But, you know, that's essentially where we're at. And, you know, I've known Tony for a long time and you know, he is, um, as I said, my father was a, a Freemason and Tony's a Freemason. So although I'm not a Freemason, we've got a, a bit of a brotherly bond there. Just want to go to the next slide. Thanks, uh, Mick. And if, if everyone can, if anyone has any questions, make sure you jump in and put them to all panellists on uh, the chat and we'll uh, go through and answer them. Yeah, we... either Tony or I will be on the chat or Mick. So, you know, ask a lot of questions. So there's the two of us. Obviously, you can see... <laughs> 
from my video. That's a wee bit of an old, old uh, photo, so I'll have to get that um, off there, but that's okay. Uh, so both of us have a Masters of Law. Um, you know, Tony's obviously very skilled in that litigation area and negligence. He'll talk about that, and I think there's enough said about me in terms of SMSFs. So let's just go on the next slide and have a look at the agenda. Mm. Um, so what I'm going to do is um, I'll just get uh, Tony. Do you want to give yourself uh, a little bit of background on... I've given my sort of background on... Um, yeah, I just piggyback off yours, basically. That's all, you know. So I, I uh, met Grant back in 2010, and um, and fortunately, we've never been since together, which has been wonderful. Um, well, you know, Grant's taught me a lot in the SMSF space during that time also. And again, um, whilst um, when Now Infinity was around, uh, when Grant was in there, uh, what we decided to do is basically um, incorporate you now Infinity Legal, and uh, moving on from there, basically what we were doing with now Infinity Legal was piggybacking off the uh, the platform there and servicing the now Infinity clients um, Australia wide, which was a, it was thriving at the time. Um, and then in 2016, uh, Grant sold out, as you know. Um, and then he started writing his books and all that type of stuff. But I continued the actual practice uh, during that period of time from 2016 onwards. Um, and then what had happened was we, um, you know, he started writing his books um, and then we started liaising together. We sort of kept life for a bit. Um, and then, um, and then like you sort of came up, um, we still continued. And then from Now Infinity, because we couldn't use Now Infinity Legal, I had to change the name to TGA Legal at the time, in, back in 2016. And then in 2018, when everything sort of came to, to light with our light year, 2018, 19, wasn't it, Grant? Somewhere yeah. around there? Yep. Somewhere around there. Then we decided basically to rebrand the name um, to Abbott and Morley. And you're probably wondering how uh, what Abbott and Morley or Morley stands for, basically. So... Grant Abbott is in Abbott, obviously, and Morley is shortened from Anamolis to Morley, basically, right? So that's what that's what the um, uh, that's what the name's all about, basically. So we designed the logo, etc., and um, yeah, and it's um, it's been pretty, pretty, um, pretty good so far. So um, yeah, so we've had a relationship with with Grant now for the last decade or so, and it's been. A wonderful journey with um with him as he's uh, he's taught me a lot in the SMSF space also. Hey, you've uh, lasted a lot longer than some of my wives, I can tell you, which is pretty good. Uh, <laughs> I mean, yeah. certainly from my point of view, working with both of you and uh, even just some of the times we've workshopped a few matters and stuff, it's been it's been wonderful. You know, just the, the different uh, thought process and obviously Grant's um. Is is the king or master of strategies, and um, and then and Tony, um, you know, your with your uh, legal background and stuff, and uh, it's, it's just wonderful, you know, how we bounce things off, and you have thought through things, and you know, dealt with certain issues and stuff, and tried to put uh, other solutions in place. You know, you know, from my point of view, I've really enjoyed it so far. So, no, it's great because what I try to do at the end of the day is analyze certain things in terms of not bringing on any litigation. Yeah. That's my objective, right? Yeah. We don't want to bring, a lot of lawyers try to bring on litigation. I try to prevent litigation from coming yeah. on. That's why I'm so fussy about documents to make sure that they're, you know, pretty tight at the end of the day. So that way there's no litigation in the future, right? Which is exactly least, You know, sometimes, you know, I mean, you get lawyers out there that, you know, will bag the the documents and I'll say this and that and the other, but look, that's immaterial to me. So um, the documents are pretty good. They're well drafted. Um, and they speak for themselves at the end of the day. And they're also signed off by, um, by Abbott and Morley, me being one of being the principal of the law practice. And, um, and I've got professional indemnity and the firm's got professional indemnity insurance up to $2 million. So they you know, I've got no problem with that. So it's good. So I'm yeah. quite comfortable. Yeah, I think um, if you just want to go to the next slide, Michael. Um, so, you know, from um, our perspective, John's just um, asked a question in relation to the um, uh, 
uh, he's asked a question in relation to SMSF trust deeds. Obviously, you've got a lot. You've got a lot of uh, things. I would personally, it's not only SMSFs, John, it's also discretionary trusts. I'd be upgrading uh, both of those. I think it's absolutely crucial. With the SMSFs, um, look, we're going into the six-member fund rule. Um, you'll see with ours, you've got the ability to do an SMSF will, an SMSF living will, an SMSF testamentary trust. These are strategies that you don't find in the law. You actually find because we've created the we've created those strategies and embedded them into the trust deeds. So you're not going to get them anywhere else, which is which is really crucial. Um, on that on that legal side of advising, it's it's quite interesting that um, even these days there's a few holdout. If we go back and have a look at lawyers versus accountants, um, if you go back maybe 40 or 50 years ago, there were things such as guilds, um, even pharmacists and doctors. And, you know, this comes back from like centuries ago uh, where they'd all get together, you'd be part of the guild, uh, and then effectively you can only work in that area. Um, so that's been embodied of the the legal fraternity, uh, probably for, for way too long. You can see there's been a lot of breakdowns now in terms of conveyancing, uh, mediation services, et cetera, because the legal process is, is a very expensive process. Uh, there's still some holdouts, of course. You know, I've actually seen barristers' opinions. Um, can you believe it that a tax agent uh, cannot provide any taxation advice uh, because that is a legal service? notwithstanding that the commissioner's got, I can show you about 10 rulings um, and also ASIC that tax agents are supposed to give tax, tax advice, which is quite, quite beneficial. So uh, when we have a look around that is, uh, it, it's important that uh, when we do um, legal advice, we know where it stands and, and what we're doing. Uh, day in, day out, of course, all of us are setting up pensions, self-managed super funds. John, is, you know, we're going through the upgrade process of our SMSFs, trust companies, loan agreements. So many of us um, have been doing online documents for a long, long, long time. And again, uh, our, our deeds and documents and all that, you know, we don't just put them up and rip someone else's off. You know, we, we think about it strategically uh, where it's important. Um, in terms of uh, John, um, all you have to do is you, John's asking where he gets promo material. There's actually a letter there um, sitting on our strategy support centre, uh, which you'll find on the Lightyear Docs site. If you go to client emails and letters, there's a letter there as to the 10 reasons why a client needs to um, upgrade um, their deeds right now. So just use that, send it out through an email, send it to all the clients. And I think it's important. And, you know, I follow uh, Tim Munro's advice is that it's important to tell clients that it's up to you to make that choice of upgrading. But if there's a legal issue around it, um, that essentially they're the ones who they can't complain. They certainly can't take litigation against the advisor. And as I said, it's just not SMSFs, it's discretionary trusts, which I think are a lot more problematic uh, because um, everyone's believed that uh, upgrading a discretionary trust is a resettlement, um, notwithstanding commissioners' extensive guidelines that it is not a resettlement. So um, I'd go out and do it. We just turn to the next one. So the, oh, the next slide, thanks, Mick. Um, you know, from our perspective, um, Tony, do you just want to go through that? Because I know you wrote the letter of advice, so it'd be great. No, that's fine. Just in respect to the letters of, you know, the letter of advice I wrote, basically, what it, what I'm saying is at no time due to the inbuilt legal protection and security measures, can a user change or amend a document on the Lightyear Docs platform that has been signed off by a practicing solicitor, which is me, obviously. And to do so would result in the user drafting the document of a legal nature and engaging the provision of legal services. In addition, it would be a breach of copyright. And in our opinion, when completing the form field, uh, fields through the Lightyear uh, Docs platform, the user or its employees are merely carrying out an administrative task, which is not the provision of legal advice, unquote. Yes, so if you want to go to the next slide, um, Eleanor asked a, a really good uh, question there. If you just, okay. Um, around the actual um, templates. 
um, all the templates have been developed. So what normally happens is someone will um, come and say, look, I'd want such and such a template, such as a shareholders agreement, a license agreement, et cetera. We're working on a, a couple of interesting ones uh, with Tim at the moment um, in relation to the uh, SMSF testamentary trusts um, or the family protection trust where we can have sub trust there. So they're almost like a testamentary trust with, with terms and conditions for each uh, relevant person. So the way it works is that, you know, Tim or someone will engage us. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll build that document. Um, and obviously it's going to be cut price because we're then going to use that document as the template to go up onto the Lightyear doc system. So what we do then is we strip it back so that then you can only insert Eleanor the fields that relate to the specific client. For example, the client's um, name, their address, um, their nomenclature, whatever's required. Now, of course, you'll go through and you'll check you know, what's going to apply here or there or whatever. You have a look at investment strategy. There's quite a lot there. Now, we don't go through each and every one of those documents ourselves. Now, we can if you want, but obviously there'll be an extra cost there. But the only thing you can um, really change is the, um, the data going in there. Um, the data captures that we have, again, in that same strategy support centre, we've got data captures around the protector, um, around estate planning, SMSF wills, EPOAs and wills. Uh, we've got data capture around a couple of other uh, elements there, SMSFs. So you can do those and send those out to your client. Uh, also know that Tim at Change UPS has huge amounts of data capture there that you'll then take that data um, and then you'll be able to insert that into the documents. Ideally, going down the track, um, I know our team is working on Lightyear Docs 2, um, which has taken us quite a while because our, our current system, Hot Docs, although it's not the prettiest, it's a robust uh, legal document um, service. I mean, anywhere that, if you have a look at the Moment Castle now, which is up to around about 30 documents, so you can actually do a spousal, um, you can do like mirror, Oh, SMSF wills, wills and EPOAs in the Moment Castle. So that, that blows it out to 30 to 35 documents, which is, is really unheard of um, in this day and age. So it's a good system. So we've, we've spent a lot of time and also money um, looking at which is our best service. And one of the ones that we want to get to um, is um, effectively want to be in a position that you'll be able to send out, for example, John, um, or Eleanor, you'll be able to send out a um, email um, with the relevant data um, uh, attached in that email where the client fills out online, and then that will go in and automatically create the document. And that gets around a big issue for us because um, one is the what are legal services, and there's there's a few cases on this, but but drawing and da drafting documents of a legal nature is obviously a legal service. So for example, um, I draft the documents, give them to Tony, Tony reviews them, signs them off. So um, that's that's a, that's the essence of what Abbott Morley do. Giving legal advice, absolutely. So that if we um, if you've got a client that needs an issue addressed or fixed up, uh, we can happily provide legal advice. Uh, but generally what we tend to do is provide the, the legal advice and then you know, from that perspective, we will create the documents so it's not that overly expensive. Uh, we don't want to, as we are really exclusively for Lightyear Docs users, we want to get to, as Tony said, a practical solution, fix up anything with a deed of ratification, deed of rectification, or, you know, adding new documents or, or really fixing things up. But we don't want to charge a fortune compared to what you normally do. The good thing about it is there's a lot of embedded uh, understanding um, within our uh, legal firm as to how to fix things up. Um, and, you know, there, there's just been a relevant case that's just come in front of us. And uh, it's funny because we gave a, a letter of advice exactly what needs to happen and the 10 or 12 documents that uh, need to happen and through, you know, a good advisor of ours. And um, it ended up getting be hijacked by both RSM and PwC. And at the, at the end of the equation, the the client 
has come back to us because you know we're the we're the practical ones. Um, and uh, in the meantime, we we done all the work, hardly charged anything, and the other guys were obviously racking up fees just trying to understand what we were doing. So that's why we can turn things uh, around pretty quickly. I'm using the name of barrister or solicitor, so I'm I'm not a solicitor or Australian legal practitioner. Uh, probably like Michael. Um, in fact, if you have a look at all the light year docs, directors, and team, uh, we've all got uh, legal backgrounds. In fact, um, I've got a master's. Uh, Tony's got a master's. Uh, Michael, you've got a LLB, haven't you? Correct. Yeah. And um, Ashley is going through. She's actually doing a, a doctorate at the moment. Correct. She's doing a master's and a doctorate. So that's even above all of us. So. You know, we're, we're really um, we're extremely unique amongst any, uh, just the light your docs side is, uh, amongst any user, which is great because we can all add our thing and our, our legal side of things. Now, what are not legal services? Again, if, if a client's actually doing the data capture that fills in the field, that's the ultimate because the client's actually the one who's preparing the documents. So you're merely facilitating the process of um, getting it out of the system. And again, um, as Tony said, you just simply get the data capture or you put in the details from zero, uh, which will be in our Lightyear Docs too. You add it automatically, they'll just feed in there. So that's important. Um, you can sell legal documents if you want. Again, that's not the provisional legal advice. Um, and again, I think this is the important one is that um, each of you professionally, for example, a financial planner who's got their RG146, um, same with the tax agent, you can advise on estate planning. You can't specifically go in and start from scratch and draft a will. Um, that's been, over in Western Australia, that's been ruled out as being the provision of a legal service. But if you're using a template, absolutely. And if you want that extra, you know, if you're not really comfortable doing those first one or two, I mean, that's essentially where you can come and use Abbott Morley. So if you just... Grant, the, a large amount of lawyers do really use templated documents anyhow. I've found in practice, I mean, and they you know, they're, they're effectively precedent documents that they utilise again. And there's generally only a couple of operational sections within those documents, such as a, you know, a put and call agreement. And I, I, I've paid big dollars for, you know, sort of the top, I guess, what you'd call tier one legal firms. And... Um, and the document seemed very similar across a number of those firms. And uh, the operational provisions are generally only, you know, two or three or four clauses and the rest of it is replicated and you end up paying um, $10,000 for. Yeah, generally generally what they do is they'll, they'll either go to LexisNexis or yep. um, there's over 4,000 templates um, or they'll go to Thomson Reuters. Um, now, when you do that, the problem is if you go to your suburban lawyer, but as you've said, even the top flight legal firms pull those templates down, um, they'll review them. And then, so they pull it down on a Word doc. Uh, they've then got to yep. review them. They've then got to go through a, um, a whole process of working out whether it works or not. Um, then they have to make the changes. So for something that's like a put and call, it's very difficult. So one of the ones for our example, um, uh, I'll come back to you, Eleanor, around about the will side of things because I, I think you don't necessarily need to do that. We'll go through a process on that one. Um, with, the, with the option agreement, one of the elements we're putting into the protector, um, which for those of you who've done it, is a gift loan back. Um, with the, the gift going in, uh, obviously, instead of uh, re-gifting each and every year, uh, what we do is we do a gifting at the time and then you're going to have an option of um, putting in a call option. And um, again, so what, what we do is we look through that call option um, and we've got, you know, examples. We've got ones that we've used in the business before um, doing call, putting calls. Uh, we've built, so we take that and then we um, build it specifically for the protector. Um, now, that's, that's our skill, and the benefit of that is that then everyone gets, or all, all our users, get the advantages of getting a highly structured, um, uh, you know, bona fide call option for the protector. Uh, it's not a call option for an employee share plan. It's not a call option for shares. 
is a call option for assets uh, in the protector that have been the underlying equities being gifted over. So that that's where you're getting the the full value. Now, can you go in and change it? No, not at all. But you can go in, and all you have to do is put in the um, obviously the name of the uh, family protection trust, which is already in there because you put the common parties in, and then they've got a call option um, over various assets where the legal title is held by. Um, the giftees, uh, sorry, the gifters who put the money, uh, the assets or the net equity into the trust in the first place. So again, that's, a, that's the sort of stuff that we do, but that's, that's our drafting, but you, all you're doing is the administrative side of things. Just go to the next slide. Um, and look, from I, I won't go through this to any great extent. Um, one is that, um, to me, accountants and planners are really you know, the best when it comes around a succession, asset protection, estate planning. First off, one of the reasons is um, you're already well aware of the various structures. So, for example, for those of you who've done the motor or the motor and castle, there's, you know, gifts, loans, promissory notes, discretionary trusts, leading member discretionary trusts, SMSFs, blah, blah, blah. So there's a lot of stuff in there that you guys actually know about. Whereas if you went down to the the suburban solicitor and said, okay, well, this is what I want and I want to deliver um, that to my client. First off is the solicitor actually has to, even if you gave them the exact templates, the exact order in which to do, they've got to go and find all the templates, build them and try and link them all together into some coherent um, element. So... Um, so Debbie, not at all. So if you've got a legacy trust, mum put in money, um, no, not at all. We can we can sort out anything with fixes. So if you just want to send Tony an email and uh, effectively we'll work that out for you. Um, Debbie, again, the way we work, sorry, just while I'm jumping in here, I am just want to talk about, you know, if you send information to us um, or if you want to have a, a Zoom with us on a particular issue, there's no cost on that compared to what you normally do with, um, a, uh, a legal firm. So we'll sit down and we'll work out how to fix it, what we'll do, and then we'll come back with a quote. So again, Debbie, if you want us to build a document there for us, uh, we'll just send us in the details and we'll come back and say, okay, well, it's going to cost such and such. But generally our, our fees, what, what we'd be charging our Lightyear Docs users are probably, probably about um, 50 to 60% of what we would charge um, a normal retail client and probably um, only about 10% of what a, a legal firm would do because it just simply would take them too long to even understand the issue. Um, as I said before, uh, reason two is you already know discretionary trust and SMSFs. Uh, for example, uh, you know, my belief is that all your monies, um, if possible, uh, should come out of the SMSF uh, directly to adult beneficiaries, uh, grandchildren where possible, uh, spouses if need be, depending on their um, transfer balance cap. Um, and then essentially we can build SMSF testamentary trusts. And just to give you an idea, I had an ex-legal friend of, well, we're still a friend, but um, someone we used. And when I started talking about SMSF testamentary trusts, he was saying it's, it's impossible to do them. But there's not. There's a provision specifically within um, Section 102 AG2, which provides that minors uh, taxed as adults for SMSFs to create or trustees of SMSFs to create these documents. So that, um, and and it just scares me that um, the average suburban lawyer won't go down that area because e even the experienced ones don't know what to do. So they push it all over the estate. Uh, where they then create these testamentary trusts and all that, charge a client you know, two, three, or up to ten thousand dollars for the wills, um, and then knowing full well that it's it's there's a good chance it's going to be challenged. Whereas, with the exception of potentially New South Wales and notional estates, which I believe we can fix up for that one, um, anything that comes directly out of the SMSFs is not challengeable because it's federal law, it's um, not, not guided by the various succession acts of each of the states. So lawyers lack that, that tax and that knowledge. Um, so if you um, utilise that and have a look at um, reason three there, um, 
most of you have long-term relationships with your clients and the families and you know the ins and outs, whereas traditionally the, um, the lawyer only just sees the, the client for a short period of time, gives them this huge fact find, which really most of it, I'd say 80% of it is irrelevant. Uh, and then as a consequence of that, um, you, you just, I mean, you're ending up going to and fro with a lawyer going through, you know, discretionary trusts and all that. I had a look at one the other day that uh, the, the will um, said that the executor was to take over the discretionary trust. It was to be the appointor, which there's no validity in law for that at all. So a lot of these have been incorrectly drafted. They just don't, they don't know what they don't know. And the, they get too scared and they put it in. Um, so again, um, you know the clients and you can also deliver in a fairly quick time. Uh, most well, of I think that, that's the most important point like, is that the accountants do know the clients. Um, they know them uh, almost intimately. Um, I, the number of clients I've had and I speak to them, do you have a will? And, they, and they'll go, yeah, we went down and saw a lawyer and got it done. Did that lawyer ever contact me? And, you know, would, would the, does, does the client actually understand and know all their structures? So some, a, a lawyer has put a, a will or an estate plan in place potentially missing uh, a large amount of the information or getting it wrong because the, the client doesn't necessarily know their circumstances and um, especially in complex situations and stuff. I, I've, I've had many a client who've gone and seen a lawyer and then all of a sudden they've got, got a will and uh, the lawyer's never reached out to me or spoken to me as their uh, advisor or accountant. So. Yeah. You, you can tell pretty quickly too that, you know, from that perspective, if there's no successor director solution, it means that you know they don't know what they're doing. I mean, that should be the yeah. first thing that you do, which is also great because it means that all of you as accountants and that it's a great first step um, into that estate planning space to get that continuity of operations, whether it's through a trustee company for a discretionary trust or an mm -hmm. SMSF trading company or bucket company to have that. Um, uh, successor director and you know can charge three to five hundred dollars for for each client but it, it's very very practical for you um, I'll jump on a little bit quicker because I'm taking a bit more time but um, obviously you guys are the trusted advisor um, lawyers are, are seen as very competent but in terms of warmth and empathy uh, Princeton study showed um, that they ranked alongside prostitutes which I thought was quite funny so if we want to go to the next slide um and um look I, I actually I, I actually grant my big my saying at the moment is that um i, I think the legal industry and i apologize in advance tony is the the taxi cabs of the world that needs uber to shake them up which is which is really what uh, abbott morley and lightyear docs are using because we I see agree. ourselves we see ourselves as the um the legal advisor to the accountant and planner rather than so if we can help facilitate and then you can charge the fees that we charge for example we can see a will with testamentary trust like two two thousand six hundred if you've got a a mum and dad that's quite beneficial so um these these fees are there i know um john if you're scouting around into the um that strategy center uh, pull down the um the fees um our retail fees and then uh, charge exactly the same so if we just want to go on the next one, um, and Tony will take you through the uh, uh, the roadmap. Roadmap. Yep. The roadmap. Yeah, no, this is um, pretty straight. It's pretty straightforward, but it's a, it's a bit of a process. But, you know, what you've got to do first is just go through the process of, you know, gathering all the data through the data capture sheet. And then um, so Tony, and the, the, account, the account grabs the data capture sheet off Lightyear Docs and then they completed that with their client. They? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So they bring them in, um, they sit them down, they go through all the data capture uh, with them because we had another advisor the other day that took him about four hours to do it because he had a lengthy estate. So yeah. he took all the data down. And once he's done that, you feed it in through the, the system um, if it's a complete moat, it'll take you, you know, quite a bit of time. But you feed it through the system. And after you've done that, it'll spit out all the relevant documents, the ones you select through the system. And after that's done, then that, um, and then those documents come to us um, in PDF format or in Word format. 
and then we set up the first Zoom with the client and the, and the advisor. So we set up a day of time, we get on the first Zoom, we go through all the documents together with the advisor and the, and the client to make sure that um, what his wishes are or her wishes are at the end of the day are correct. And if there's any necessary amendments that need to be done, then we jump jump off Zoom, we do the amendments, we send them back to the advisor and to the client to make sure they're, um, they're correct. And then we set up the second Zoom with them, right? And then we run through the document again with all the amendments. And then we take it right through the execution process after, and that's at the third stage, basically. So there's three stages to the process, you know? So just as a snapshot, you know, but anything can rage. I mean, you may have to do a fourth one, but, um, you know, we can work that out later on. So um, there's a bit of a, there's a bit of a process to it, but uh, we eventually get there. We get it all signed off, get it all witnessed and the originals all come back to me. Um, and then I sign them off on the day that we had the Zoom. And then I send the originals back with a certified copy. I keep a copy, the advisor keeps a copy and the client obviously gets his, um, um, the originals. And what I say, if there's an EPOA in place, um, you know, they should go to the relevant institutions or the, you know, the banks or to the titles office and go and get those registered up straight away. So there's no, few, so there's no problems um, later on. So, and that's what a lot of um, clients have done on my advice, basically, and it's, um, it's been successful. So it's great. Yeah, it's a bit of a is, is there a fee involved in uh, uh, registering those EPOAs, Tony? Um, no, not, not that I know of. No, um, in Sydney, I think um, there was there, there's been quite a few that um, some clients have gone directly to the titles office, but you need to have you need to have your um, the original EPOA um, you know in your hands. Yep, um, and also ID. To make sure that you know the title officer identifies you, and once they've done that process, they just register up the um, uh, the injuring power of attorney accordingly. But I don't think there's any fee attached to it. Uh, no, no. Yeah. it's interesting that we've got a, a couple of questions uh, just coming through. Um, the if we want to go through and, and do this, which is a client, you know. It's a facilitated service using Abbott and Morley. Just contact Tony. Uh, we did have some standard fees, but we, we find that for some clients, they're very, uh, they're quite complex. And so we were mm. losing quite a bit of money. So if you come out with all the information, and particularly if you've done the data capture, then we can set in place a fee. And obviously, it'll be for couples as well. Now, when you're doing the sign off, the best thing to do is get the sign off for um, the will, the EPOA, and the SMSF will so that. You know, don't do not do it three, just couple it all up and then we can give a quote um, on that one. If it's just a simple will, uh, again, the process has been signed off by Abbott and Morley. Um, you, you know, you're not going to need to um, necessarily go through this facilitated process that Tony's talking about. Um, Gideon raised the, the question, well, if you're using the moat and the castle, um, I, I'd point it to you that, you know, if you're using the moat and castle, Gideon, the, the will that you're doing or the estate planning you're doing, um, one is you could actually drop it out. Um, you don't need to do that because essentially if you've done it properly, all the assets are sitting in the Family Protection Trust, there is nothing for that, that will. So they can go to their own solicitors if they want. Um, alternatively, um, you can just do a really simple basic one there. I think that's the, the way we're all going is more towards that asset protection before and after um, death so that the, the wills become irrelevant as opposed to, for example, the typical one is we'll put everything, including super into the estate where it can be challenged from a family provisions perspective. But if you want to go down this track, particularly if you've got clients with testamentary trusts, um, all of our stuff comes out with, um, you'll see all of our wills come out with um, execution, um, Okay, so Richard Munro mm. recently registered an EPO in Queensland. It costs $195. Mm. Okay, so thanks thanks for that, Richard. Uh, and again, we're, we're all here to learn. Um, look, I only picked up yesterday and we've made changes to our documents. 
there that there's been a pilot trial of digital signatures, oh, sorry, audio visual witnessing, uh, which is quite radical in its nature uh, in New South Wales. Um, so we've gone and changed our documents for that, but that includes deeds, mm -hmm. includes uh, wills, and includes EPOAs. So that if you want to get someone to witness, why not get Tony to witness? Mm. Uh, he can then sign off, certify, put it in our vault, and then you're, you're off and running, which is great. Oh, I've done plenty of those. So, I, yeah. I, prefer, I prefer wet signature rather than digital, if you know what I mean. So I want to know who, the, who I'm talking to, to the client at the end of the day. And, and so, um, every state is the same. Yeah, you really need to... It's a, it's a good way to actually make sure that the Zoom's fantastic to get mm -hmm. to know the a lot better. And particularly these days, you just can't guarantee with lockdowns you can even see someone in the next suburb, which is, is crazy. Go to the next slide, um, just quickly. Um, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go through this because we're running out of time and I wanna give yeah. you a couple of cases that we worked on, but we'll send you all these slides out with the recording later on today. But uh, if you've got a client and we're going through one at the moment that you need with the administration, where they've died and tested, um, or even if they've um, just passed away because you really need to have a, um, a good legal firm on the side of the executor to, uh, particularly if there's a family provisions claim, if, if you know, something's gone wrong. So if you want that, uh, we're there to help you with the administration of your state. Uh, but more importantly, uh, make sure that you're part of the process so that you know, you're going to get the ongoing work if there's a testamentary trust, et cetera. So we're there for you um, as part of the process. And we can, for example, with an SMSF, we're sending away SMSF testamentary trust. We can do that within, you know, days of the person dying as opposed to anything trying to build a testamentary trust from a state could take. And by the time you probate, you have to prove everything in front of the Supreme Court mm. in some of the trust. It can take weeks. In fact, Tony and I were involved with one. Mm. which I thought was quite simple, but it ended up, you know, the probate lawyer wanted to go and get advice from a barrister and you know, it probably would have cost maybe an extra ten to $15,000, which again is one of the reasons that we want to try and do everything through the, what we call the family protection trust or, or what I call the living trust. Um, and on that, um, just be aware that in the next probably, well, I'm trying for shooting for early May or mid-May, uh, we will have a three-day course, um, which is an accreditation for succession, asset protection, and estate planning. So a lot of this sort of stuff, we're going to go right down into the, the deep detail there for you. So you'll be competent and also confident to provide advice in, in all of these areas, whether it's bloodline, we're seeing SMSF testamentary trust, and you'll start to see how it all blends together. Now, this is to Sorry, just to go to the next slide. Um, Tony, just want to go through, this is a really interesting... No, oh, this one's a really, this one's a beauty, this one here, you know, yeah. we had. Um, I'll give you a bit of a background on this one too. So so essentially what had happened was a, an advisor contacts me. He says to me, oh, I'm in trouble. I said, what happened? He says, oh, I've got 15 clients. He goes that the commissioner wants to disqualify, you know, from the SMSF. I said, oh, okay, then fair enough. Let's, um, um, so one of the advisors comes to us um, with a notice against 15 trustees for disqualification. Uh, the action arose from monies used by the trustee for an overseas conference where the, um, where the, uh, where the corporate trustees actually took a tax deduction um, from their SMSF for this overseas conference that was held, right? Um, but before that, how the commissioner actually caught on to these guys um, is some smart, you know, person from this conference tweeted and said, basically, we're at this SMSF conference and, what, and, and along the lines, basically, we can get a full tax deduction for all this. I know. So really remember that? Yeah, you're far. Right? Oh, well, that's so insane, you know. So um, the commissioner caught on to all this, and guess what happened? Probably about a week later, all these trustees, or you know, the, the ATA writes out basically to the advisor on behalf, you know, saying basically these are the guys that we want to sort out now. So we're going to, you know, we want to audit all the accounts, the SMSF accounts now. So um, 
so they got caught out basically on that basis. So um, cut the story real short. I won't. I don't want to get right into the nitty gritty stuff. But what had happened was the commission actually put out a position paper to each trustee. We then had to make you know formal submissions as to why the corporate trustees should not be disqualified from their fund, right? So we wrote some lengthy submissions. It took about three, maybe four shots out of it. Um, and at the end of it, uh, the end result was this. One, um, the commissioner's view was that, um, well, your clients sh should have known or reasonably known basically that they couldn't do that. Well, we went back and said, well, hello, um, you know, Mr. Uh, you know, Commissioner, you know, I mean, they're mums and dads, for God's sake, you know, the, you know, they're just normal, normal uh, working class people. So they wouldn't have known. So they didn't get the correct advice at the end of the day. You know, they, 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 did, they just didn't know. So we had to put the background to it for each individual corporate trustee. We had to put basically the, um, the background what they did for a living um, and all that type of stuff. So it was a, about a three, four page um, um, submission on that one there. Um, and the end result was basically one, they had to go back and do a, um, well, the commissioner made a direction actually, to go back and do a, a corporate trustees course uh, to make sure that they, you know, that they're aware of their duties and responsibilities as a corporate trustee. The non-compliance aspect of it basically was was also resolved, and um, and and the commissioner didn't disqualify basically the fifteen trustees based on now three or four submissions that we we had made previously. So um, they were lucky in many respects um, because we tried to resolve it and we used our, our ADR skills basically to uh, negotiate. Um, to negotiate the disqualification with the um, with the commissioner at that time, but moving forward to twenty twenty one now, try doing that, yeah. and I can get, and I can guarantee you it won't work now. You know, so um, hence the reason why when clients come to us to say, well, we want to set up a, an SMSF, um, you know, I immediately just say to them basically is why you want to set up an SMSF for what's the purpose. You know how much money is in the fund, eh? Um, because all these previous funds that we acted for had under about a hundred thousand dollars in it, so um, it wasn't it wasn't even worthwhile setting up a um, an SMSF at that time. So, and also when you set up an SMSF now, the commissioner actually randomly um, rings up the um, rings up the corporate trustee who set it up. And quizzes him basically on what he what what do you know about SMSFs? What are your duties and responsibilities as a corporate trustee? And if you can't answer those questions at the end of the day, well, he quizzes you out of it. Well, then you won't get a TFN or ABN number out of it either. Yeah, so which, there you go. Another reason why it's important to have um, limited number of directors as trustee mm. companies, and obviously other members who won't withstand the fiery pressure of the tax office providing their enduring power of attorney to that director so they can be members and not directors of the corporate trustee. If you go on to... Remember the direct deputy commissioner of uh, uh, Super also spoke to us, Grant, and said that they were increasing education in the space and um, enrolling that stuff out uh, through their website, and uh, which, which might, may include... Uh, uh, some sort of testing framework as well for no. the SMSF trustees going forward. Yeah, so a lot of the work that we're doing on that in that succession asset protection and estate planning space, um, SMSFs absolutely are crucial, but they're not necessarily the be all and end all. And I think that that's that's the main thing is that we need to be flexible across our structures to know that um, we can shift things and and make sure that they're protected, the family wealth is protected from litigation, from the tax office for that matter, uh, from family provisions claims, family law claims. Um, and, you know, we've got that that whole suite. And again, that course will be out very shortly. If we just go to the next one, I'll just go through a couple of ones quickly and then we can 
wrap it up so Mick can get on the road and get his camping gear out and his swag hat and he'll be sweet. Mm-hmm. Uh, so this this came to us recently um, and, look, it was a, quite a distressing one from my perspective is that um, uh, an 80-year-old um, and his wife, who was in her late 70s, um, and their kids who've been brought in to make up the numbers were all trustees or corporate trust corporate directors of a trustee of an SMSF, which primarily invested in a um, 1322C trust um, that had undertaken obviously a lot of um, property um, renovation, development, et cetera, which is quite sizable. Um, the spouse, and they'd been separated for 10 years, can you believe, had more than $6 million um, in that um, superannuation fund. And uh, the chairman of the trustee company just refused to pay the money out. Mm. And so as a consequence of that, you know, I, I, that something that's unjust like that is, particularly around the super, can you imagine that um, going to um, CBUS or something and they said, oh, no, no, you can't take your money out. Um, their argument was that, you know, they had plenty of money to live on. There was a pension and all that. It was like, well, no, that doesn't gel with me. Um, so we ended up, uh, I, I came in pretty hardcore um, and uh, we, the, the argument they were using all the time and, and they got uh, lawyers, I don't know, they got family lawyers, which is complete waste of time. Um, and they were arguing there was a lost D, we didn't know what to do, et cetera, which is a load of rubbish because we referred to quite a, a famous case, um, uh, Irving and Dunstan, um, and then uh, threatened uh, the accountants who were involved with the transaction, uh, the auditors who were also part of the legal uh, part of the accounting firm, and also obviously the uh, chairman of the board of trustees. Uh, the client resigned obviously as a trustee to ensure they were party, but under section 54C and 55.3, we said if the, the monies weren't paid out within a 28-day period, which is generally required um, under the CIS Act and regulations, uh, the 55.3 damages would uh, commence from that day. Of course, they, they went to the ground and um, now it's it's currently sometimes you do need to go to court. Now, we don't go get involved um, in the legal proceedings, but we will get involved from a a specialist level and and uh, help barristers there, but with the six million dollars tied up, it's it's quite a important one. So make sure you come to us if there's any issue. You don't want us on the other side. Um, the last slide, um, Mick. Um, yep. And um, oh, sorry, this is a full restructure that we went through recently for a um, client who was on a. This was uh, one of our direct clients. Didn't come through. Uh, didn't come through the. Uh, normal advisor channels, but they'd seen uh, myself speak. And um, so we did a Zoom session with them and I said, oh, look, everything you make, are you talking about makes sense. It's the first time I've had bits and bobs and this person was a serious player uh, from various people, but we didn't know how to package it all together. And really it was just a moat and castle that we're building for them. So they, they were earning more than a million dollars a year. Uh, they're working in an extremely litigious field huge Div 7A issues, no SMSF, which was crazy because they had quite sizable balances, he and his spouse. Um, they'd had children, wills and EPOAs were um, you know, really old. Uh, trusts, one for the spouse's business that was throwing up quite a bit of money, bucket companies, etc. Really didn't have much asset protection uh, given the, you know, the field that they worked in and uh, a house which was worth more than $4 million and I think they had about you know, he had something, you know, something like about 15 or, or 20 bitcoins. So he's obviously done, you know, quite well out of um, that process. So well, what we did is essentially went through the, the moat and the castle. I mean, that's that's what I built that for. I know not many of you are using it. I don't know Gideon's using it. Uh, one of the things that I was having a chat with Manish Sundarji yesterday and uh, what I'm going to do is uh, with Tony, we're going to start building... Um, uh, little strategies, for example, you know, exiting a member from a fund, you know, what what you need to do and uh, what documents you need to do from a perspective. So flowcharts. Mm. Um, so that way we can um, cover a lot there for you. 
uh, rather than having to to build it because a lot of this sort of stuff is you don't know what you don't know so we'll put that down and we'll put it somewhere up on the site so it's very easily ser searchable but like I would encourage you you know over Easter I mean it's pretty boring but for those of you who haven't done a moment castle on yourself uh, you know it's, it's pretty instructive to do so that full restructure still going on we got rid of all the div 7a you got the spec we've got the the super fun you know and, and we're going to reduce the tax sizably over time it's very difficult when you're earning such huge amounts of money but at, at least by bringing in parents and all that sort of stuff we can ameliorate the tax position of the family group itself which is essentially what you're after um, the final slide um, is that uh, we've got uh, we do a lot in property development uh, we've you know placed farms into SMSF so they're then uh, developed um, for industrial purposes. Um, yeah, uh, Debbie, there's a there's actually I haven't done a client email for upgrading a discretionary trust. I haven't done a client email on the difference between a, a leading member um, or discretionary trust and a leading member. But I will do that over Easter. I'll I'll, I'll put something up on that strategy centre there for you. Uh, we've built a lot of um, unrelated investment trust for partners and I know that um, uh, Michael is working on that with one of the clients is that uh, you know we've built the the suit there for them and, and given a flexibility uh, to raise additional capital down the track and then I know Michael is out there with a client you know searching for properties obviously everything's pretty hot at the moment but he'll be able to come in and, and uh, help uh, raise that capital but, you know, we've built that suit, um, you know, from the ground up with that in mind. Uh, we did a JV between an SMSF and a commercial developer, which was huge, obviously, with 300 apartments in Melbourne. Uh, but it just shows you where you can go um, go to with this. Uh, we did one uh, last year, where, which was a hole in line. And, and I probably could put this up um, as an automation. Um, so it was a transfer of a retail shop. Um, into an SMSF. So we did a contract of sale, uh, obviously did contributions. They went in as NCC um, because uh, well, went, they went into NCC, but they didn't breach the caps because they were um, the 15 year rule was imposed. Um, they went in, um, we did the tax transfers or the, uh, the duty transfers. They went in, um, did investment strategy, became part of the pension and commercial leaseback. So yeah, effectively did all of that, and it was a great transaction. And look, mm. that that's absolutely particularly. I uh, was in New South Wales, so it was only a five hundred dollar um, stamp duty. So it was virtually, you know, tax free the whole way down the track. But uh, tax wise, would be saving absolute fortune. And, and on top of that, because that property is now inside the SMSF, it's um, effectively it's in a great uh, asset protection position. So look, we do all of that. And if you just go, we are getting to the final slide, sorry. So um, if you want to get in, in touch with us um, at any point in time, um, you've got abbottmorley.com. Uh, you, if you go to that site, you'll see there you can just book an appointment with Tony, um, you know, just a 15 minute, give him a call, send some slides through, whatever. And if need be, then we'll jump on uh, a Zoom and then we'll go down the track. So for example, we worked uh, quite extensively with um, an advisor today and uh, looking at, um, you know, making uh, distributions into an SMSF from a family trust um, and doing a private ruling on that. So that, that took a long while to work through, but, you know, it's worthwhile having a, a benefit there. So we're continually um, working on stuff. Um, we're there for you um, and essentially, you know, nothing's too hard. Uh, obviously, we've been blessed to have Ventum Optimum um, with the protector and all that, being able to do a PPSR, uh, being able to do um, stamping. Do you want to go through uh, just, uh, I think it's important at this stage because uh, we're pretty lean and mean, Abbott and Morley, so we don't have those stamping facilities, but I know you do. Yeah. Um, and yes, certainly. Yeah, we can, we can stamp uh, trustees in any state. Uh, we can arrange uh, mortgages, student techs, uh, Australia-wide. Um, we go, go, we go. Effectively, the process is we do a um, a VOI of the client, so it's a verification of ID, and it, that's all done electronically. Uh, um, and the client provides ID electronically into um, the PEX desk space. We also do a client authority form, and then uh, we have the national mortgage form 
and the terms and conditions signed and uploaded. And that, uh, and so we, we, we can register mortgages. We can register the obviously either a first or a second. We can take caveats out. Um, we do a full PPSR service uh, for um, an, a, any number of um, assets and loans, direct loans, uh, UPEs, um, and uh, we register all that uh, for you through the process. And we, we and that, that sort of that bolts into, I mean, Event Mopton's uh, core offering is uh, business turnaround uh, leading into insolvency and uh, creditor and creditor negotiations. And we've been working uh, closely with Abbott and Morley in relation to that. But um, it's certainly an area that has hotted up in the last, which I said it would, it's hotted up in the last um, 10 days to 14 days. Um, We've had uh, probably 10 new deals come across our desk in the last, uh, in that, that period. And uh, we're working through those at the moment. And um, we were, uh, did a, a webinar, a Zoom yesterday with a, an insolvency practitioner who said it had been quite in his space and um, which it has been in the whole area, but um, it's it certainly, we're, we're predicting a landslide. I think ASIC come out uh, yesterday and said there'd be, they predicted just in Queensland, 5,000 insolvencies in the next three months, so which is scary numbers. Yeah, so that, that sort of fits in really well with us is that um, I know in the past, like just registering mortgages, Tony and I were mm. scratching our heads and trying to get mm. someone universally across Australia and you know, have one practitioner trying to charge a couple of grand to register a mortgage, which is, is crazy. Yeah, I know, and... So, you know, from that perspective, um, just to give you an idea, there was another one that uh, one of our advisors uh, went to a legal firm for that. Um, they reviewed all the documentation. They didn't really understand what was going on. And they said, look, we can fix everything up. Well, not that it needed fixing, but it'll cost you 12 grand to do it. So it actually shows the value in the documentation and, and the strategy you're using. But anyway, look, I don't want to spend uh, much more of your uh, time. Uh, obviously, it's the 1st of April, so April Fool's Day. So hopefully, mm -hmm. thank a few people, which would be great. Um, and also have a really good Easter. So it's a it's a good... Um, yeah, that's ridiculous here, yeah, John. So ridiculous. Yeah, Michael can do that for you. So look, it's been great to have a session. And, um, you know, thank you, Michael, for giving us the opportunity to... Uh, talk um, about Abbott Morley but again you know we're always there for you guys you know have a chat with Tony he's always around book an appointment and um, nail him down no, no, I'm down. No, no, I'm have down. A chat to you. I, love, I love talking you know I know it's the legal, it's the legal to really work with isn't it so you know it's uh, uh, you can have a great partnership with you guys and um, it's important that uh, that's in place I think and as, as Tony's grieving, and a book appointments all throughout the weekend because he doesn't celebrate <laughs> Easter. <laughs> no, no. Our Easter's what in May sometime of oh, no. Orthodox. So no. I'll be I'll be there. So no worries. And just one more thing, Greg. Just a big uh, to all of the advisors, a big shout out, and also in particular to, to Tim Munro from GPS. Wonderful, very delighted to to have met you, Tim. Um, very helpful. Um, always available for us and um thank you so much for your help and support team also thanks mate okay guys thanks for that